Right, so if you thought the DWP couldn't stoop to even greater depths, this is certainly one of the most disgusting stories I've heard in ages, as now being an unpaid carer apparently means you might not be allowed to inherit anything that might be willed to you. Imagine being an unpaid carer. In other words, you're not an employed or self-employed carer running a business doing that caring. You've simply given up work yourself to care for a loved one whose health has failed them and they need that additional support from you. It's a position an awful lot of us will find ourselves in one day. The only support the government offers you in that position is carer's allowance, which is a pittance. And the hours they are permitted to still work part-time alongside those caring responsibilities are strictly limited to less than 16 hours a week, along with the amount of money you are actually allowed to earn. Go one minute over, go one penny over, you lose the entire allowance. But that is how many carers are forced to top up their incomes to get by in a world only ever getting more expensive. So imagine your mother passing away and the DWP decides that means you've gone over your income and savings limits and they decide to seize your inheritance. Well, this is exactly what's just happened to one woman. Right, so when I saw this story this morning, this hit particularly close to home. A woman in Cheshire has had her inheritance seized following the death of her mother by the DWP because she'd fallen afoul of their arbitrary unpaid carers' limitations, earnings limits, and all despite having arranged a repayment plan, despite that, with the DWP already. So they had no good reason to do what they'd done, especially given the tragic nature of the windfall here. It's the ultimate Scrooge move by a government department which is already amongst the most publicly despised. This story resonated with me particularly since I'm also an unpaid carer. Many regular viewers already know this, albeit one that has long since given up carer's allowance because this channel, those who kindly watch these videos, those who support me in being able to keep this channel going and make it a viable business have enabled me to do that. But I'm still caring around this. Just because I no longer accept the government insult they call support to help make ends meet doesn't change that fact. I mean, my mother also, as it happens, terminally ill right now. In the none too distant future, I know I'll be going through what this woman in Cheshire has been through. This could easily be me at another time and place. Could easily be a large number of carers on carers' allowance elsewhere, simply because the people they care for, many of whom will be family with life-limiting or terminal illnesses too. So is this the kind of swindle we'll see from the DWP elsewhere now then? For those not familiar with carers' allowance, Allow me to briefly set out the rules of it, because it should appall you, frankly. See if you could live and get by under these circumstances. We're now entering the new tax year. So as of this year, carer's allowance will amount to £81.90 a week. Like I said at the start, it's a pittance. And to qualify for that, you need to prove you are caring for somebody for a minimum of 35 hours a week. So if you break down that £81.90 or £81.90 a week, into a minimum hourly rate, for example, that works out at £2.34 an hour at best. It should be illegal in all honesty. The amount of money unpaid carers save the exchequer, the taxpayer, as Thatcherites like to call it, a nonsense term as it is, is equivalent to a second NHS budget. But because functionally they have no leverage, they have no choice but to care for their loved ones because their loved ones need them, they can be abused, frankly, by the government. And little wonder they have to try and seek work alongside those caring duties, which may amount to a lot more than 35 hours a week. But even that is limited. You can work for no more than 16 hours a week alongside that, and you're not allowed to earn more than £151 a week through work. So all told, as an unpaid carer, you're legally allowed to earn through work and receive, via carer's allowance, an amount of money each week totalling no more than £232.90. Can you get by on that? Work one minute longer, earn one penny over that earnings limit, and you forfeit the entirety of that week's carer's allowance. There's no taper to it. No allowance is made for the boss asking if you could cover a sickness or stay on an extra hour because someone is running late. It is so easy to fall afoul of these arbitrary rules. It shows scant regard for anyone who is a carer, government that could not care less, much less for the people they're caring for. And goodness knows we know the Tories have really had it in for the long-term sick and disabled for the last 14 years. On top of that, though, 
The carer's allowance technically comes out of the benefit the person you're caring for out of their benefits because to get carer's allowance, they have to be in receipt of certain benefits themselves. They have to have successfully been able to claim personal independence payment, PIP, disability living allowance or DLA, armed forces independence payment or one of a couple of attendance allowances or disability payments because without a successful claim for them, there is nothing for the government to take the carer's allowance out of. So when the DWP talk of taking carer's allowance from carers who break their arbitrary rules, don't imagine for one moment that money goes back to the disabled person and their benefits that they care for instead, because it doesn't. It's petty theft by the DWP, in my view, for breaking arbitrary rules they set that functionally keep unpaid carers impoverished. And if you're wondering by this point what incentive there even is to claim it, Bearing in mind many cannot work because they care for far more than 35 hours round-the-clock care, it's because it covers national insurance contributions to qualify for the state pension. And if you can't work, losing your right to claim that later in your own life, well, nobody wants that, do they? So that's how it works. Frankly, if it supported people who are legitimate carers, the cared-for person's benefit claims proving that, the system should support these people so that having to work to barely make ends meet still shouldn't be necessary. Yet it is. And so now we have this story now of a victim of these rules, having had her inheritance taken from her following the death of her mother, who was the person she single-handedly cared for. The lady at the centre of this, uh, a woman called Vivian Groom, began working at the co-op on minimum wage in 2014, having been told, according to the BBC News website article on this story, that a social worker had told her she did not need to declare her earnings. Now, at that point, perhaps that was because she was under all the hours and earnings limits, but not being clear on them, they move each year in line with benefit up ratings, you see. Not keeping track of that, and the fact that there's always been this immediate cutoff once those thresholds are only just passed. Perhaps those thresholds were never explained properly. Given what a pittance it is, perhaps the thought that there even were any never even occurred to her. A lot of people do not understand these arbitrary rules especially if she's been advised badly, as seems to be the case. This carried on until 2019, when the DWP all of a sudden became aware she'd been working, took her to court under the Proceeds of Crime Act, and the judge was scathing at this point. This was back in November of last year, of, but of the DWP, not Vivian Groom. You see, by this point, Groom's mother had died, and she'd been left some £16,000, and the DWP had had her bank accounts frozen with a view to seizing the lot. Between 2014 and 2019, Groom had earned £16,800. That was her pay across five years. So she was hardly making much money there, was she? And the DWP's argument that she should have declared this fell flat to an extent because she would have had some entitlement to carer's allowance based on those earnings. She would have qualified some weeks and not others. But the DWP wanted to seize every penny of her inheritance, despite being almost equivalent to her entire earnings over those five years. That is also in spite of a repayment plan with the DWP in place by that point of £30 a month, which goes to show the low income of the household we're considering here. But having accepted her fault, never denying it, but because she never reported the hours she was working, the DWP had made the rather bold claim that they couldn't assess how much she had worked to decide how much of her earnings they could claim back, and were therefore attempting to take her entire inheritance. They basically couldn't be arsed to do the maths based on her earnings, and how much she earned from one week to another, and the judge gave them short shrift for that, telling them to do the proper calculation. She could have been jailed over this, but the judge decided there were no aggravating of factors. This wasn't done with intent. Her earnings were bare minimum, and they were barely getting by as it was. And here is the DWP fixated on demonising those with the least who were doing right by their loved ones. Vivian Groom was penalised for caring about her own mother, in effect. One DWP worker spoke to the BBC under condition of anonymity over this. So what does that say about the department they work for if they fear for their own jobs if they speak out? Well, they said on this case. From 2014 onwards, really, they, the DWP, had no excuse for having these overpayments carry on for longer than two or three months. If they're investigating all the alerts, he told BBC Northwest tonight. DWP should be protecting these people from getting into trouble with their benefits, but instead they're persecuting them and treating them like hardened criminals using the Proceeds of Crime Act against them. It's appalling. 
And I completely agree with that. It is appalling. And that is the absolute truth of this too. The DWP gets alerts from HMRC to act upon these issues if carers allowance claimants are earning too much. Clearly, the DWP are ignoring them, especially if it took them until 2019 to notice in this woman's case. If the DWP was competent and able to do its job properly, or even cared about doing it properly, these things wouldn't happen. They would be heading off issues like this instead of allowing them to happen, because that then allows for more stories about thieving benefit claimants playing into hard rights Tory narratives that treat these people as social pariahs instead of people who have put their own lives on hold with all the hardship that brings to them personally to do right by their loved ones and this could literally happen to anyone. My mother who I mentioned earlier used to walk her dog seven miles twice a week a year ago just a year ago at the age of 71. Today a year later Motor neuron disease has left her immobile, leaving her needing such a level of care, we had to make the tough decision for her to go into care. But that just shows what could be around the corner for any of us, and our families, and you'd hope a decent state, a wealthy nation, a country to be proud of, would offer support to you in your time of need. But it isn't true. And more people need to be aware of this, more aware of the traps that end up being set for too many of us, especially at times when our thoughts are elsewhere when we're more fixated on looking after our loved ones. Back in November, when this case was first heard, the judge threw the book at the DWP. Groom was given a community order. Instead of taking heed of what the judge there said, though, the DWP have now dragged them back to court, still intent on seizing the entire inheritance under the Proceeds of Crime Act. And a different judge gave it to them yesterday. They've stolen that inheritance, in my view. It's their failure for not acting on these overpayments sooner. Last year, 147,567 overpayments were identified. So that doesn't show how poorly understood and farcical this system is, not to mention how badly the DWP oversee it. I don't know what does. And now the DWP have got away with seizing an inheritance here. It's only a matter of time before they do so again to another of their victims. Despite all these alerts and the DWP clearly not meeting its responsibilities, overseeing the most vulnerable and their carers, looking after them, seemingly viewing them instead as of less worth than those who make more money or who work, certainly the case under Tory rule with the far larger amounts of tax evasion and avoidance that goes on, benefit fraud is going to become an even bigger issue for the DWP as the Tories passed a bill to create what are effectively benefit spies now to go checking through your bank accounts next. They can do that, but apparently not notice an alert from HMRC. So you try and work that one out. You can get the details of that story in this video recommendation here. I am absolutely incensed by this. I'll hopefully catch you on the next bid. Cheers, folks.